Determining the proper sizing process and setting the correct neck tension seems to be one of the most important questions the reloader needs to answer. In a podcast I was listening to the other day, there was a quote from one of the top competitors in PRS, Scott Satterley. If you can control your neck tension, you're way ahead of just about everyone else as far as being able to control your standard deviations and run out. While many of us can agree that this is certainly an important topic, it seems also that there are many opinions about how to accomplish this. I feel bad for many of the new hand loaders that are trying to figure this out. What is the best direction to go? In today's video, I'm going to cover many of the options there are for sizing brass as well as setting your neck tension and discuss some parameters for some upcoming testing to develop real data to help reloaders decide the best option for them. This is not my first video on this topic. I've done some previous testing in 3A Winchester and we've shown some data here on the channel. When I posted these previous videos, it was clear that there were some other opinions on how this should be done. Keep in mind that if you're happy with your process, I'm not here to change it. I simply want to determine, as much as I possibly can, the process that achieves the most consistent results or if there really is a benefit or a difference between the different options there are. I've been thinking about how to properly test this for a little while now. I realize I can't make everyone happy, but to test all these options as fairly and efficiently as possible, here are the options that I am proposing to test. And yes, I'm looking for your feedback on these options. Option number one, a full length die with the internal expander. This is a standard option how I would assume most reloaders start, so a standard full length die with the internal expanding device installed. Option number two, the same full length die with no expander installed and using an expander mandrel to set the final neck dimension. The default expander I plan on using was two thousandths under the neck diameter, but I'm willing to listen if you have other suggestions. Option number three, a full length bushing die. I would accomplish this with one of the Reading S dies with a bushing that would theoretically set our neck tension again at two thousandths under neck diameter. Option number four, the same full length bushing die with the bushing value one thousand smaller than the previous option with the final neck dimension being set with the same expander mandrel as our full length die. Option number five, same Reading S die except this is a neck only die. Use the same bushing size that sets the neck dimension at two thousandths under neck diameter. Option number six, the same neck only die with a bushing one thousandths under the previous value and again the final neck dimension being set with the expander mandrel to two thousandths under neck diameter. Some of the options we haven't tested here on the channel before. Option number seven, our Lee Ultimate die set has two different dies in it we'll talk about. The first is the collet die. The collet die simply is a neck only sizing die that only sizes the neck of the case and I believe the standard dimension is again two thousandths under neck diameter. But don't worry, we'll measure it to be certain. Option number eight is going to be the same collet die, except we're going to replace the mandrel inside with one of the undersized mandrels that's available from Lee. This is labeled 260, but I'll certainly measure it and provide those dimensions when we do our final video. Number nine, one of our previous options, and I haven't decided this yet. Again, I really want some feedback from the community here. A lot of people are concerned that I didn't crimp any of the rounds last time. So I am willing to have a configuration under test where we use the Lee factory crimp die to set the final crimp on it after we've seated our projectiles. Again, all of them are going to be seated the same. My default is to go as basic as possible. It's using that with option number one. So your full length sizing die with the internal expander and using the factory crimp die. Again, I'm willing to listen to you guys that crimp all the time to get your feedback on what you think is the most beneficial version where we're really going to see where that crimp helps our reloading process. And secret option number 10, I really haven't figured out yet. To be honest, I thought about trying to get a bushing bump die, but Everything right now is sold out with who knows how long of a back order. So unless someone is willing to provide me a bushing bump die from Forrester, I don't think that this project is going to tolerate a nine month waiting period to get started testing. So the other configuration of what I was thinking is using the Reading S die without a bushing installed and setting our final neck tension with the Lee Collet die with the standard expander in it. I know that was one of the suggestions I'd heard in the comments of some of my previous videos. So again, I'm really looking for your feedback. Tell me what configuration that I'm missing here or what other options we really need to cover. For the amount of brass and components that this is going to take, I'm really trying to limit this to a maximum of 10 configurations. For you poor new guys that are out there, yes, there are more options than this, but I'm hoping this is going to cover just about all the bases that you might be interested in. Now, if it's not clear already, 6.5 Creedmoor is the cartridge we'll be loading for. Personally, I would have preferred to use some small rifle primer brass because I have more load development with this barrel with some small rifle primer brass. However, I really want to include the collet dies in the testing. I don't want to be drilling any primer pockets out or anything of that nature. And so large primer brass is going to be required. 
I would like to use something a little bit more premium like Peterson or Lapua. If I can't find any of that before we start testing, the Hornady I do have on the shelf. I have at least 150 pieces, all from the same lot that we should be able to use. As far as projectiles are concerned, the 140 grain ELD, number one, I have a reasonable amount of them. All these are factory second 140s, so if I need to do some fire forming, I can certainly use these. Before you were only able to order one box at a time, I was able to get 400 all from the same lot of the 140 grain ELDs. So we should be able to do some testing before we run out of components. As far as powder is concerned, H4350, I have four pounds at least that are all the same lot number. I'm hoping that that's going to be enough to complete our testing. The primer I'm looking at is the CCI250. The CCI250s have worked very well for me previously with large primer brass with H4350 in this combination. Hopefully we'll be able to see some minute differences between the tests. To be clear, I don't want to do any neck turning or any of that fun stuff because I don't want the average guy to think that these are mandatory steps to start reloading. Again, I really wanted to use a premium brass like Lapo or Peterson, but at this point in time, good luck finding it. Overall, I'm a little concerned to give each one its fair shot. There will be slight differences in case volume, which I'm certain I will measure and highlight for you when we go through it, but neck only size brass is going to have a slightly larger case volume, and it's probably going to have a slightly lower velocity for the same given powder charge. I'm inclined to be using the same powder charge for all different configurations to be as fair as possible, depending on what charge we end up with. I'm sure it's going to be somewhere around 41.3 grains of H4350. Something close to that has been a pretty reasonable load for us in the past. If you have a way you can explain that as a fair way to compensate for those deviations between the two configurations, I'm certainly willing to listen. I am planning on annealing all of this between every load to make sure that our necks are as consistent as possible. Annealing versus not annealing really won't be part of this test. But I'm hoping with all these different sizing and neck tension setting configurations, we can really come up with something that helps these new guys decide the best option for them moving forward. If you'd like to see how neck tension can actually affect the performance of your loads, make sure you check out this playlist. It's going to show you how neck tension has affected the performance of the loads that we've covered here on the channel before. If you want to make sure you catch this video when it gets posted, make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn the bell icon on so you get notified when I post next week's video. I hope to see you come back next week, and until then... Stay safe and small groups.